Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode of Dexter's Lab. Um, you saw on my last video that I finally got my Quantel RAM recorder working, uh, which has been really awesome news. Um, so we're going to be able to start creating some cool little animations. Now, um, a little side project that I've had alongside that is um, repairing another one. A, a good friend of mine, Chris, who also has uh, pretty much an identical setup to mine, which is the Paintbox Express and a Ramcorder. Um, I've been helping him get his uh, Paintbox and his Ramcorder working, and we have had some issues with his Ramcorder. They appear to be very similar to mine, uh, but not precisely. So, what I wanted to do in this video is just run through some of the details about trying to get his machine working. Now, uh, one of the biggest problems that I've had is his machine is in Frankfurt and I'm here in Manchester. So there is a slight distance issue. So what he's actually done is sent me his address and IO process cards from his Ramcorder. Um, and I actually have those here. So I'm actually just going to, I have actually already tested them. I'm just going to show you here what the issue is. And then we'll look about trying to figure out what is wrong and uh, then trying to fix them. Okay, rather than going to the um, effort of actually capturing the video and converting it, I'm just going to point the camera at my monitor. It's easy to see what the fault is. Uh, so if I go into the Ramcorder at the moment here, um, if I just scroll through the Ramcorder frames, it's just a load of garbage and that's to be expected. Um, the Ramcorder has been turned on and there's nothing being written into it. So that is basically what the DRAM looks like, completely un uninitialized. So I'm just going to pull in some frames and write that to the Ramcorder and then we'll try and play it back and uh, you will see what the problem is. So if I uh, select, say, um, 150 frames and I bring in some animation from that I've got stored already uh, look to background So what this is going to do now is just load in one hundred and fifty frames into the frame store. So at the moment, um, what is actually happening here is it's loading each frame off the um, one of the hard disks and sending it by SDI to the paint box, uh, where it's writing it into the frame store. Okay, that's, that's loaded in 150 frames into the RAM corder. So if I actually scroll back and look at the animation here, you can see that the video is completely glitchy and not very good at all. Um, so if I, the way this actually works is, I, if I'm scrolling around on here, it's pulling in live video from the um, the RAM corder, and if I let go, then it captured a freeze frame of it. So if I actually um, hold down and actually just hold this on frame, it's currently on frame 62, um, you can see there that the video is actually glitching all over the place, even when I'm on a static frame. So there is definitely, so that's definitely changing over time. So it's not a, the corruption doesn't appear to be on the actual static image, it's the video output of the static image, if you see what I mean. And I can actually show that in another way. If I go to the live video, I can actually show um, that is actually the live video from from the RAM corder um, showing a static frame. So you can see all this stuff changing and flickering around. So uh, back in the day when Quantel were producing all of their stuff, um, they originally uh, partially helped create the CCR, CCIR 656 video standard and the BT601 standard. 
uh, which is basically um, how to transmit digital video over parallel and serial. Um, originally there was the parallel version but then the serial version came along very quickly and that ended up becoming uh, pretty much SDI. Most of the paint box and the RAM corder uh, pretty much use the parallel uh, digital video on all of the stuff that's internally and when they transmit the serial version over SDI they use a serializer and a deserializer to convert between the two. Now back in the day um, Quantel you actually used a Sony device um, called an STB1601 and an STB1602. One took the parallel data and converted it into serial data and the other one did it the other way around so you um, fed in serial data and it gave out parallel. Now those devices were apparently notoriously unreliable. Uh, yeah, it caused a massive problem apparently. So any device, any machine that's using one of the, particularly the Sony branded devices, they really weren't very reliable at all. These um, um, serializer and deserializer chips failed quite frequently apparently. And it's actually these ones here, these ceramic hybrid packages. Now I believe that uh, Sony licensed it to ST Micro who went on to continue producing them um, all the way through the 1990s and into the noughties. Now I believe they were still unreliable but not quite as bad as the Sony ones and in particular the STV1601 uh, device is particularly um, common in failing so that's this one here and this is the output um, serializer so this converts the internal digital video into SDI and interestingly it seems to be the output on Chris's output card which is causing a problem so I'm very much suspecting um, his um, STV1601 is faulty so what we're going to have to do in this video is um, take his board, take off this little daughter board because it's actually a separate plug-in board and then remove the hybrid and pop on another one and see whether that fixes the problem. Now I've already done this on mine, uh, I've actually took mine off and I've actually put the device in a socket as well so I can actually change these in the future because these are an utter pain in the butt to remove from the PCB. Um, additionally on Chris's board these little daughter boards are actually soldered in as well so not only am I going to have to desolder um, this little daughter board from the main PCB but I'm also then going to have to desolder the, um, the hybrid off this board and it's, it's very very tight in there there's lots of little surface mount devices um, all around and it's really awkward to get to and this ceramic just soaks up the heat like um, like you wouldn't believe. So what we're going to do is uh, switch all this back off, take um, the other board out and start desoldering this daughter board. I will then put some sockets in place and uh, I will then be able to take my board and plug it into Chris's card and see whether that fixes the problem. If it does then I will then have to desolder his um, 1601 and replace it with another. Okay, I've just extracted out the um, IO process card. Um, so you can see there the two serial 601 modules, um, BT601 being the protocol which is used by uh, the serial video. So, uh, I need to flip this over and start desoldering the backside. Um, I've decided I'm going to use my desoldering um, hand pump with this uh, because uh, I seem to have more success with that when I was uh, when I was doing mine. So, I'm going to carry on using um, and I'm going to use my old soldering iron as well, which has a slightly bigger tip on it. Just saves me changing mine in my normal one that I use so uh, I can get a bit more heat into those uh, those pins and hopefully suck out the solder a bit better. So I should uh, make the point that it is actually a little bit awkward to get in here with the camera sat right next to me so 
I have to excuse if I seem a bit awkward. Um, it's because it is a bit awkward with the camera sat here. Um, now, also, I've noticed here that uh, when these were soldered in, uh, Quantel have obviously bent over the pins on the corner, the corner points, um, just to hold in the board. Obviously, while they were soldering it, so I'm just going to have to straighten these pins, pins up first, um, and then start desoldering. Otherwise, uh, I won't ever be able to get out. Going to suck out now. As I said, I'm using my normal um, hand pump. Now, one thing I do use is a silicone tip. Um, these work so much better than the the hard Teflon type. Um, certainly recommend that you get uh, the silicone tip tips to go in. Uh, and I've actually slightly modified this one as well. I've actually chopped the end down, so it's very very. The end point is only just bigger than the hole that's. Um, that it's actually sucking the solder up, so it just means you can just get a little bit closer to the pin. I'm just going to turn my iron up a little bit. You just need to make sure you keep the iron on there a little bit. Let the heat really get into the into the joint. Because of course, if any solder is wicked up onto the other side of the PCB, you're going to have to get all the way through and desolder the other side as well. Right, I just had to move the camera out of the way because it was just getting a little bit too awkward to do it with the camera there watching. So uh, I just moved the camera out of the way and just finished off the other side. Um, now what I'm going to do now is just run across each of these pins with um, a small screwdriver and just to see whether they move. Um, little tip. Um, there'll, there'll always be little, tiny bits of solder which will grip between the, uh, the through hole and the pin. Um, some come off clean, some just have a tiny little bit of, um, uh, of solder left that just helps keep things stuck in place. And on um, because this board is quite big, it, it's not really going to be able to wobble out. So um, what I'm just going to go through and just touch each of these pins just to find out which ones are actually completely free of solder. Because if they're completely free, they will wiggle around a little bit in the hole. Um, and those that are still stuck will just have a little bit of tension and sometimes just, just touching it with the screwdriver just makes them click and they become unstuck from the side of the through hole. So I'm just going to go through, just try and identify which ones are still stuck. And that one is, that one is, that one isn't, if you can see that maybe. The pin is free to move about so that one is fine, that one is. That one's stuck, that one's free, that one, you might have just heard the click there as it came unstuck. Okay, I think this has finally freed off. There is only one casualty, and that's this end pin. Pin one. Um, it looks like that pin is broken off, but it also looks like the through hole is attached. So it looks like it's pulled the through hole out of that, but it was attached on that side anyway. So we might be okay. Thankfully, these are four layer boards, and um, it's, I believe, it is just ground and power on the inner layers. All the signals are on the top and bottom layers. So that shouldn't cause too much of a problem.
Right, I've just had a good proper look at this and it does appear as though that pin where the through holes actually come out is actually um, only connected on this side to the um, parallel digital output. Um, it's actually this pin here. It just runs through to one of these pins here. So I think what is actually happening is the digital data is um, uh, pulled off here and then it's turned into the CCIR656 and BT601 standard on this board here and then this outputs um, the parallel data to this socket and then also sends it on this board to the serializer to provide the SDI. So that pin uh, that uh, has come off the top here, it should only be connected um, on this side and it only goes to that connector and it's the parallel version um, which probably won't be used anyway, um, but I don't think it, I think it would all be fine anyway. So what I need to do now is um, desolder any of these bad pins on here, straighten up the any ones that are slightly bent, the ones that um, were bent over um, to secure it in, into place. Obviously, I'm going to have to replace those. Now these pins are a bit of a uh, bit of an issue actually. I do have some spares, but not this size. Um, these are slightly bigger profile, um, so I think what I'm going to have to do is use one of the shorter ones and uh, just solder it in a little bit further into the hole, um, sorry, out of the hole um, to make it all line up properly. You'll see when I come to uh, solder it all up. Right, that's the uh, PCB cleaned up. I've got all the flux residue off and uh, cleaned up all those holes. ready for the sockets to go in. Okay, I've got uh, the line of sockets um, soldered in there. All soldered up pretty nice, thankfully. So what we're going to do now is, uh, well, first off I'm gonna have a quick clear up and then I will get um, my um, serializer module uh, uh, from my um, IO card and plug it into here and if that works then it means that the fault is on this board um, and then I will probably opt to desolder this damn thing and um, and replace it but uh, let's just try mine first and verify that uh, um, the fault is on this. Right so I've just got my um, IO card here and that's Chris is, so I'm just going to take off my um, serializer output module and swap them over. Okay, um, I have just replaced my um, I.O. card with Chris's, but with my serialiser on it. Um, I've just booted everything up, so I'm just going to try now and see what response I get from the RAM corder. Um, let's just... Um, Wipe this down to black and I'll sell one frame and buy one back. Okay, we've got a little bit of garbage up at the top there. Um, right, let's put black. Into the hole of the RAM corder. So I'm going to, um, I've got the background there set between one frame one and frame three, two, three. I'm going to record to background and then still just means the still frame that's in, that's um, on the paint box. So I'm just going to touch here and I'll write black frames to the RAM corder. Mm -hmm. 
is interesting. It does appear to be doing a similar thing to what uh, Chris's serializer was doing. Let's just play this. Kind of better. Let's put some actual pictures into it. Um, Okay, so that's loaded 250 frames in, so let's play this out again. It's better than what it was. I'll tell you, my immediate thoughts, um, this sort of tearing effect, just there and there, um, I've noticed on, on my RAM cord, I can actually make it do that. Uh, by disconnecting the SDI input um, from the RAM corder. I think, obviously, the RAM corder and the paint box are going to have to be in video sync. So, I am wondering whether, um, if there's no sync, then it's going to drift and go out of sync. If I just take out the SDI input, you can see that it's sort of, partly works but it's all glitchy and you get more of these little lines and stuff and I'll plug it back in so it's kind of it's a similar effect if I uh, if I do this on my um, fully working system I get a similar effect to what I'm seeing here so I'm wondering whether there might be a fault on the SDI input serializer deserializer um, and it's not passing across the sink properly or something to so the paint the ram corder can't output in sync properly or something like that that's my thoughts so i think what i'm gonna have to do now is desolder the other um the deserializer and swap that for mine um, and see whether that uh, makes any difference it's, de it's a definite improvement over what it was Right, uh, I, there is obviously more work to be done on this and uh, I have a sneaky suspicion with Christmas looming very, very close and then New Year shortly after it. I'm going to be going away on a short vacation. I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have now to look at this between now and the New Year. So uh, I suspect I'll probably have to put this on the back burner and we will uh, start looking at this again in the New Year. Right, it just remains for me to wish you a Merry Christmas, if that's something that you celebrate. I hope everyone has a good New Year, and I will see you in 2018. Bye for now.